Hi and welcome back to Photoshop Elements Imaging Techniques and Tips. As always, I'm your host Ken Keith. Thank you for joining us here in the United States, around the world, local user group. Hello to you. Well, just a couple of weeks ago I made a video for uh, Vimeo uh, here that was entitled Making Better Panoramas. And then Adobe released this past um, uh, Wednesday or Thursday the new Photoshop Elements 9. And there are quite a few changes within it. I have this on the screen now. This is the one that you're seeing. And if you'd like to get a trial program, you can do so. It's free. It's for 30 days. And it is a fully functional program. There's no uh, branding to it. So just go ahead and use it. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can go ahead and leave your uh, current version of Elements up and uh, it will ask you at some point in time if you'd like to convert to catalog and you can say yes to that if you want to bring your pictures over into Elements 9. It does have a uh, bit cleaner, easier to look at interface I think. And uh, What we're going to talk about today are the changes within Photo Merge Panorama. Now I've opened these four JPEG images into the editor workspace and I'm going to make a panorama out of it and uh, the same uh, technique or method is always just open up file new and photo merge panorama. And now you'll see a familiar uh, dialog box with a couple of exceptions here. Over here in the layout is a new one called Collage. And so what the heck is that? Well, uh, if you've followed this series, you know that uh, a lot of times I will like to use reposition only. Uh, and Collage is a lot like that. The difference is... Uh, at least according to uh, the help file, is that when you do a reposition only, uh, you do it gets it aligns the layers and does the blending, and uh, it doesn't do anything at all else to those source layers. But in collage, there will be a transformation taking place. It might be in rotating or scaling of the source layers. The other thing that you'll see. Uh, I don't know why uh, blend images together uh, is particularly there and by default checked as uh, after all you're going to be blending images if you're going to be doing a panorama. Uh, but you do have these two new ones here, the vignette removal and geometric distortion correction. And that would be if you're using a, a, a very wide angle lens uh, you may be, cons and it's not highly corrected, you may want to uh, click Geometric Distortion Correction. And as far as vignetting, sometimes also when using wide angles, you may be getting some vignetting due to, say, a, a filter or a lens hood. And so uh, that's uh, some useful things, uh, depending on how you're shooting. Uh, I'm going to actually click on uh, the geometric distortion correction here and I'm going to add my open files as as always it's the same uh, as uh, previous versions and um, I'm going to just uh, collage it actually but if I do that you see what happens it takes that away so we're going to do something else. We're just going to leave it in the auto. Now when you do auto, it actually uh, analyzes the program. Uh, your images does uh, is, is analyzed in the program, sorry. And then it will choose perspective or cylindrical based on what uh, its programming is. And um, and uh, you can uh, read all about these different layouts in the help file. Uh, most people that uh, you listen to will recommend that you do auto 
and uh, actually I'm one of those that says okay give that a try maybe first but um, I think you're going to like maybe collage and reposition only for some so anyway here we go let's let's click on that and see what happens I'm actually going to pause the video for a bit until everything gets done. Okay, just a note, I do pause these things every once in a while because I just don't see any point in having you sit here and, and watch these programs uh, cook. Uh, so just save some time in the total length of the video. Anyway, well now it's, it's formed out of these four vertical panels, um, a composite, and then here is a new dialog box that pops up that we didn't have in previous versions and it asks you if you'd like to fill in the edges of the panorama and if you always wanted to do this well probably the the best thing to do if, if you needed to fill in the edges is if you have a pretty featureless uh, area such as just a plain blue sky and uh, in this one I do have um, some cloud detail and all, so I'm probably, uh, it's it's not uh, crucial that it fills in the edges, so I'm not going to select this option. I'm, and I'm not going to check this always perform box on either, so I'm going to click no and come out of that. Well, it's done a pretty good job here. You see, I, of course, like in all of them, I'm going to have to um, do just a, a bit of cropping. And you'll remember that I did uh, tell it to uh, do some distortion correction. And it did a pretty fair job. Now, I did a, a run through with these same images in uh, L8. And uh, what I had to do was a, a bit more correction uh, with the uh, free transform uh, tool uh, to uh, get the uh, Liberty Memorial. To uh, tower here and this flagpole and to, to a lesser extent this statuary uh, to a 90 degree so, uh, angle so uh, it actually did a pretty good job there now if you click on fill in the edges you may also get a dialogue that says or a little note that pops up and you, you, uh, I went to what they call the release notes that said uh, that uh, you can't, uh, it won't, the program won't fill in the edges because you've run out of memory. And if that happens uh, while you're making uh, your panoramas, you, uh, you have to go back and resize each picture to a smaller size. Uh, the same uh, warning message may pop up when you're going to go to save your panorama, and they suggest that. Uh, the first thing you do is try to flatten the file and if that doesn't work uh, then go ahead and try saving it uh, instead of maybe to a PSD file into the smaller JPEG format. Alright, so once I'm satisfied with this I'm just going to go ahead and I've done that I've just uh, flattened the image all the layers now are merged into one and I can apply all my corrections here uh, it's also interesting that uh, you will find in um, in the new version under new and photo merge there is one called style match and uh, you can after you save this apply style match to uh, this or any of your other images and we're going to talk about that and other features in Photoshop elements nine in future videos as well as things that we uh, should be learning and know how to do in any version of Photoshop Elements. So have a great week, take care, and we'll talk again. Thanks for tuning in now. Bye-bye.